Above the clouds, there stands a small tavern where divine beings gather, watching mortals on earth in small televisions like reality TV shows, singing, drinking merrily, and gambling, seemingly to pass time. One day, a young woman clothed in white, walks in to make a bet that true love exists. The crowd looks at her for a moment, seemingly finding her wager laughable. The boss of the tavern, also seemingly amused by this, asks everyone in the room if there is anyone who wants to take her wager. Nobody takes it, as if none of them believes in true love. But then, a man who is playing the piano in a corner takes on her bet. When asked what his wager is, he answers it to be a flaming cloud. Two kids in the corner whisper about his wager, saying that the flaming cloud means the fall of the gods and goddesses. The young woman does not hesitate to take on the man's wager. As the boss of the tavern wonders how they could define true love, one of his staff takes out an old dictionary which defines true love as a magical power that can break curses. The young woman then draws a random curse, in the form of a candy from a bowl in the bar. In the next scene, a little child named Wang Sangui is walking towards the living room's television as if entranced by a beautiful song leading him to come closer. It turns out that the kid is the one chosen by the gods to bear the curse for the bet. The young woman can be seen on the television, inching the cursed candy closer, and closer to Sangui's mouth until he innocently licks it, then passes out, marking the start of him bearing the curse. A few years later, Sangui is now a kid and assists his grandmother who is the village hairdresser, frequented by the village wives. Being an orphan, his grandmother has taught Sangui to use his charm to gain sympathy and favors from the villagers' wives. His charm always works as the ladies always give him gifts, making the other kids in town jealous of him and avoid playing with him. After helping her grandmother, Sangui goes to buy ice cream from a lady living alone by the pond where he hangs out. That day, the lady tells Sangui that someone else had taken his favorite hangout spot. Sangui goes to the place and sees a girl sitting on his spot. He approaches her and tries to make her go away. He even tries to use his charm as an orphan kid so the girl could pity her. But unfortunately, it doesn't work on her. Day by day, he goes to the spot trying to reclaim it to no avail. One day, he beat the girl in a game of rock paper scissors and thinks he could finally reclaim his territory, but the girl still doesn't go. That day, they finally properly get to know each other. Sangui learns that the girl is named Tingting and gets captivated by her beautiful smile. Then, Tingting finally lets Sangui sit beside her. Every day, they would meet at that spot and enjoy each other's company. However, it turns out that Tingting will soon be moving away to a village called Whitestone, as her dad has found a new wife after her mother passed away. Sangui, although saddened by this, promises to find Tingting when he grows up. Tingting teasingly tells Sangui that he will surely forget her when he grows up. But Sangui assures her that as long as he sees the sunset, he will remember her. Knowing that it is not every day that there will be sunsets visible, Tingting leans in and kisses Sangui to give him something to remember her by. At this moment, Sangui's curse is revealed. It turns out that everyone Sangui kisses will instantly fall into a deep slumber. Having just kissed Sangui, Tingting instantly falls asleep and falls into the pond. The ice cream lady brings the unconscious Tingting back to her house with Sangui. That night, Tingting's father and stepmother arrive and find out what happened. Tingting's stepmom confronts Sangui, blaming him for what happened. The scared Sangui is unable not utter a word. Suddenly, Tingting wakes up and intervenes, saying Sangui pushed her because she took his hangout spot, leaving Sangui puzzled as to why Tingting would lie. Hours later, he went to Tingting's place, calling her out from the window insisting that he did not push her. He opens up the window and finds out that Tingting is already gone. Days passed and the villagers found out about Sangui's curse, which they believed to be a disease. The town's kids would bring animals to Sangui and force him to kiss them, proving that he indeed has a disease. Even the village ladies who used to adore Sangui stopped coming to his grandmother for haircuts, affecting him and his grandmother's livelihood. Days pass by and his grandmother starts falling ill, pushing Sangui to learn to take care of her at such a young age. One night, while his grandmother lays on the bed, she gives Sangui reminders to take care of himself, promising that once he turns 18, his curse will be gone. Moments later, she sadly passes away. With no one left to take care of him, Sangui packs his bags and leaves the village by sneaking into a train, leading him to Whitestone Village. In the next scene, we see a now grown-up Sangui who has become a barber himself, just like his late grandma. After that day's hard work, on his way home, he sees a flickering street lamp and is unable to resist just leaving it like that. He climbs the pole to fix the lamp. Just as he is about to come down, he sees a withering plant on a balcony and decides to water it. He climbs the balcony, only to find out that his water bottle is empty. He peeks inside the window and sees a young woman sleeping. He then sneaks inside to get water, but the young woman who is seemingly having a dream, suddenly wakes up. Sangui acts fast and kisses the woman, making her fall into a deep slumber again. The next morning, we see the young woman in a library, spacing out as if pondering about what happened last night. This girl is Yuyu, a very hopeless romantic girl who works at the library. She keeps thinking that Sangui is the prince charming she has been waiting for. Sangui is packing his tools, done for the day's work when he sees a little pig. He goes into town looking for the little pig's owner and finds him sitting by the library, worriedly waiting for his pet to return. 
The man is overwhelmed with happiness upon seeing Sangui with his beloved pet. At this moment, Yu looks outside and sees Sangui. As if entranced by seeing the man from her dreams last night, she slowly approaches him. Sangui remembers her and is surprised to see her there but pretends he doesn't recognize her and leaves. However, Yu follows her eagerly and tells him that she dreamt of him. Unable to stomach lying to her, Sangui confesses what happened last night and leaves, saying he is not her prince charming and asking her not to follow him anymore. Sangui then goes to a doctor whom he has been seeing to heal his curse which he also believes to be a disease. To see if Sangui's condition is healed, the doctor keeps bugs in small jars, which he uses for Sangui to kiss, checking if the bug shows any sign of not being affected by the curse. Sangui hands the doctor his payment and even gives an advanced payment very eager to be healed from his curse. The doctor gives him a bug to kiss but unfortunately, the bug falls asleep. Unbeknownst to Sangui, Yu is still following him and sees what happened to the bug. A flashback is shown when Yu was just a kid. It has always been her greatest dream to become a princess. One day, she went to a house where she believes a witch lives in and asks her how she could become a princess. She hears a witch's voice behind the door telling her that she has to look for her prince among the cursed ones. Seeing that Sangui is cursed, she excitedly barges inside and takes Sangui with her, believing that he is the one she's been looking for. She tells Sangui that the doctor will never be able to heal him because what he has is a curse and not a disease. The next day, a little kid approaches Sangui saying he has a message for him. It turns out that the message is from Yuyu, asking him to go to a funeral house to be able to break his curse. Sangui arrives at the funeral home and sees Yuyu lying inside a glass coffin as if she is sleeping beauty. Worried, Sangui approaches to check on her, then Yuyu suddenly leans in and kisses Sangui. Unfortunately, this doesn't break the curse and Yuyu falls asleep instantly. Sangui brings the sleeping Yuyu back to her room. When she awakens, she assures Sangui that she will find a way to break his curse. In the next scenes, we see Yuyu exhausting all ways she could think of to break Sangui's curse, researching through all books she could find in the library. She grows multiple plants looking for one that she believes could cure him, and making Sangui drink the extract but this doesn't work. While walking down the street, she sees a poster of a quack doctor, so she inquires if he cowed heal Sangui and gets told about the expensive fee which Yu Yu brushes off, focusing on breaking Sangui's curse. She brings him to the doctor who ties Sangui up on a chair, and electrocutes him through his lips. Desperate to break the curse, Yu Yu intervenes and increases the voltage to the maximum. After that, Sangui's lips are now very swollen. Yu Yu kisses Sangui thinking the curse is over but it still did not work. Sangui brings her back to her room to find out that Yu Yu's beautiful princess bed is gone. It turns out that Yu sold it in order to pay the quack doctor's expensive fee. When Yu wakes up, Sangui assures her that he will find a way to bring her princess bed back. As Sangui is about to leave, Yu stops him and tells him there is one more way. Yu then brings him to the witch's house. They walk inside and find the witch. Although frightened, the determined Yu quickly explains that they need help in breaking Sangui's curse. Hearing that Sangui's curse makes anyone he kisses fall asleep, the witch takes great interest in him. The witch asks why she should break the curse and Yu instantly answers that it's because Sangui is her prince. The witch laughs and sees a rat in a corner of the room and deceivingly tells Yu that if she eats the rat, she will help break the curse. Yu seems to be hesitant but still slowly approaches the rat to eat it. Just then, lightning strikes outside, frightening the rat and Yu. The witch laughs and deceives her again saying the rat is actually her prince and not Sangui. Hearing this, Yu picks up the rat, smiling as if she had found her frog prince, ready to kiss it. The witch then remarks that it doesn't make a difference to Yu whether her prince is Sangui, or the rat, or something else. Hearing this, Yu seems to have come to a realization and suddenly walks out. Sangui runs after her. Yu realizes that she is not helping him out of love but only because she wants him to be her prince, in order to realize her dream of becoming a princess. In the end, she still assures him that even if she couldn't break the curse, someone else will, and then leaves. Sangui goes back inside and begs the witch to help him. The witch promises that as long as he gives her a good long sleep, she will help, confessing that she has not been able to sleep for 12 years. Sangui then kisses the witch and she instantly falls asleep. The witch sleeps for four days straight and when she wakes up, she asks Sangui for something to eat. Sangui tries to search the place for food but everything in the house has gone bad. He goes shopping instead and prepares food for her. After feeding her, Sangui asks her to break the curse already but she just tells him that she needs to get her strength back and asks Sangui to kiss her again so she could sleep. Day after day, Sangui visits her thinking she will finally break his curse but the witch just keeps delaying it with different excuses every time. One time, Sangui notices that the huge house is filled with dust and decides to clean it up. While brushing off dust, he finds a vinyl record with the witch's face on the cover and discovers that the woman he thought was a witch is actually a once famous singer, Zuyuexia, and has been deceiving him. He confronts the woman and angrily storms out of the house. The next scene shows Sangui giving a man a haircut. This man opens up that he has not been able to sleep due to anxiety. This reminds Sangui about Uexia thinking that she must also be anxious, causing her to not be able to sleep at all. 
That night, he goes back to Uexia's house. She apologizes to Sangui for deceiving him. They stay there talking while getting to know each other's story. The woman opens up about her glory days as a famous singer. The next scenes show us how Uexia was very well loved by the people for her beautiful voice. One day, she got scouted by a talent manager who helped her to gain more fame over time, from singing on sidewalks to performing on big stages. Just as Sangui finishes cutting her hair, the woman tells him how although his curse must have freaked him out when he first found out about it, now, it has become a cure for people who have trouble sleeping, like herself. This seems to enlighten Sangui. Back at Sangui's room, he eagerly carves a signboard and hangs it on in front of his door. The next day, the man who was previously having trouble sleeping comes and Sangui uses his curse on him, giving him a good slumber. Soon after, more and more insomniac people hear about his ability, and they line up outside Sangui's door. Sangui returns to visit Suyuexia and they go out for lunch. Uexia asks Sangui when was the last time he kissed a girl and Sangui tells her it was when he was five, with Tingting. He shares that Tingting is the reason he came to Whitestone is to find her, but confesses that he wants to break his curse first before he goes looking for Tingting. Then, Sangui tells Uexia that although she lied to him about being able to break his curse, he is still thankful for her for making him realize he could put his curse to good use and help people. While they are talking, a group of older ladies see them and start gossiping about Uexia. Then, they started singing Uexia's song which sounds familiar to Sangui. On the way home that night, Uexia who is already drunk, tells Sangui how regret can become a curse too. She starts singing, remembering her old days when she was with the person she loves. It turns out that her ex-lover was the same man who wagered the flaming cloud back in the Tavern of Gods and Goddesses. From the very beginning, it seems that Sangui and Uexia have already been connected by fate, as Sangui remembers that the beautiful song he heard leading him to lick the curse candy when he was a kid was Uexia's song. The man was Uexia's accordionist and also a composer. They were in love and living happily together. However, one day, Uexia realized that the man's accordion was too overpowering, and was stealing the spotlight from her. She asks her lover to try another instrument. He insists that he compose the songs with the accordion and it will not be the same without it. Although unwilling, he did try using other instruments although it did not take long before his love for the accordion turned out to be stronger. Then Uexia, blinded by fame, decided to break up with him and let him go. Before they parted, the man asks Uexia if this is what she really wants, and without any hesitation in her face, she says yes. One day, Uexia reads in a newspaper that the man has drowned in a swamp while trying to save a red crowned crane. Since then, Uexia started having trouble sleeping and her voice started to break and was forgotten by her audience soon after. After telling Sangui her story, Uexia falls asleep, this time on her own for the first time. She dreams of her and her ex-love back then, spending time with each other, quietly looking for flaming cloud in the sky. She asks her lover what a flaming cloud looks like and the man says he has no idea either, but he heard that once you see it you'll know, as it brings a depth of sadness or joy, symbolizing the end of something, or a new beginning. Uexia confidently tells the man that she will never experience it, believing that they will never part, so there is no meeting again, a promise that she broke herself later on. Seeing that Uexia could now sleep on her own this time, Sangui realizes it's time for goodbyes. Realizing he was able to help people already, he decides it's time to go find Tingting. He starts looking for the van with fireworks, the same van he saw that Tingting's parents had when he was a kid. After roaming around, asking people if they have seen the firework van, he sits on a bench by the street. Coincidentally, he sees the exact van passing by. He stands in the middle of the road to stop it, innocently telling the driver that he is looking for Tingting. The next second, another man comes from behind him and hits him, causing him to pass out. When he wakes up, he is already inside a prison cell. He recognizes one of the prisoners to be the ice cream lady by the pond when he was a kid. He asks the other people how they got there and they tell him that they were abducted probably because the perpetrators know that they have no one in the world to look for them. The ice cream lady is terribly sick, coughing heavily. The next second, a bottle of medicine is suddenly flushed in the pipe inside the prison cell, and the other guys rush to get it. They explain that someone from the outside has been s***ing them medicine, secretly helping them. The ice cream lady asks Sangui how he got there and he tells her that he is looking for Tingting but the lady tells him that she has never seen Tingting there. It turns out that the prisoners are being forced to make fireworks there. The next moment, Sangui sees Tingting's stepmother, who turns out to be the boss of the place. The woman remembers him as the kid who pushed Tingting into the pond and tells him that because of what happened back then, Tingting got terribly sick and perished a long time ago. Hearing this, Sangui's hopes are crushed and he loses the will to live. One day, he hears the pipe clanking and opens the lid to see a reflection in the water. The reflection gives him hope. It turns out that Tingting is the one on the other side of the pipe and has been secretly helping the captives. A flashback is shown of when Tingting was brought to the firework factory by her dad and her stepmother, who manages the factory. She saw how the captives were her stepmom's guards. That's when she started helping them secretly. She found the basement where she started sending medicines through the pipe to help out the prisoners. Years passed and Tingting has grown up. 
One day, she overheard her mother talking to her bedridden father about seeing Wang Sangui. She tells him how she told Sangui about Ting Ting being deceased, already causing Sangui to refuse eating, losing his purpose in life. Upon hearing this, she finds a way to send a signal to the prison cell, hoping Sangui would realize it's her. Good thing that Sangui sensed right away that it's Ting Ting. They continue to communicate by Ting Ting sending messages through the water's reflection. It turns out that a firework festival is coming, when they can take a chance to escape. The next day, Sangui pretends to be sick and her cellmates call the guard's attention. Just as the guard leans to inspect his condition, Sangui kisses him, causing him to fall asleep. They begin their escape but the stepmother traps them. Fortunately, Ting Ting shows up behind her stepmother, holding a knife, forcing her to open the gate. Ting Ting and Sangui finally reunite after years. Ting Ting then pushes her stepmother inside the cell, trapping her and giving the prisoners time to escape. It's time for Ting Ting and Sangui to be pulled up to the escape passage, but the rope they are using suddenly starts snapping. Seeing that the rope is about to break, Sangui and Ting Ting then just stare at each other lovingly, as if taking this chance to think only about the two of them, not caring about what might happen next. Then, Sangui kisses Ting Ting. Surprisingly, Ting Ting doesn't fall asleep, which means that the curse has been broken. Just as Ting Ting is about to fall, Sangui catches her. At the same time, her stepmother escapes the cell and fires at them. Due to the situation, the other prisoners hurriedly pulls them up. The stepmother carelessly continues to fire shots and one bullet accidentally bounces to a firework, causing a huge blast. Meanwhile, at the town's park, people are celebrating the firework festival, with Uexia performing in front of the crowd. In the heavens, Uexia's lover walks out of the tavern, holding his accordion. As he walks out, the young woman who he wagered with asks him why he did the bet. He simply answers that it's because he knows that flaming cloud exists, and that he wants someone else to know, pertaining to Uexia, as if promising her from afar that they will meet again. It turns out that the goddess so eagerly wagered for true love because she found that no one in the world believes in fairy tales anymore, herself included, despite being a writer of fairy tales herself. After Uexia's performance, she finally sees a flaming cloud up in the sky and stares at it, amazed. Sangui and Ting Ting manage to escape the firework factory but soon discover that Ting Ting has been shot. They realize there is no more time to bring Ting Ting to the hospital. The two of them instead go to a beautiful lake, where they watch the beautiful flaming cloud, spending their last moments together. Their love story will then be passed on to generations to come, proving that both true love and flaming clouds exist.